Hello everyone, I'm very very happy to be here with you all in person, finally. So we in this room has never has ever used a web map. Oh, a few people, okay. And who knows what Django is? Perfect. In this talk we see together how to build web maps from scratch with Django, obviously. If you're asking yourself what type of maps we can build with Django, Let's see an example right away. These maps show mountain peaks all around the world. And we'll use, um, we all use maps like this every day in mobile application or website. And I built these maps uh, with Django using the Natural Heart Map dataset. And uh, in this talk, we see together how to build map like this. No? Maybe. Uh, but first, I'll present myself. So I'm Paolo Mecchiore, I'm the CTO of 20Tab, a Pythonic software company based in Rome, in Italy. I'm a software engineer and a long-time Python backend developer. After using Django for a few years, I became a contributor to the project, and I've always loved attending conferences like this, and over the year, I became a speaker. I also really like hiking in the mountains, so I decided to build a map where I can put all the mountain peaks I've reached. I took this photo from the starting point of one of my last hikes. I was in the Italian Apennines, in the central part of Italy, and the sun has not yet risen, but trust me, in the distance there is the Adriatic Sea. And this is annoying. Uh, <laughs> The making of this map will be a bit like this hike. Uh, we'll start from an easy stretch and we'll go up in altitude where things get more challenging. But let's start from the basic about web maps. Uh, a web map um, has many features. It can be static or dynamic. You can interact with it or you can only view it. The map can use raster or vector tiles to represent the surface, but usually the data is stored in a special database, and WebMap will use JavaScript library to show data on your web page. On Wikipedia, regarding web maps, we can read that web map is the process of using the maps delivered by geographic information system on the internet. But implementing a geographic information system from scratch is beyond the scope of this talk. To do this, as you can imagine, we are going to use Django, my preferred web framework. Oh, this cable today is not working. So the requirements to create our map with Django are a stable and supported version of Python and the latest stable version of Django itself. In my example, I've installed it in a virtual environment and I suggest to you to do the same. To create the MyMap project, I switch to my project directory and then use the start project Django command. And the basic file of our project will be created for us. After switching to the MyMap directory, we create our markers app with the Django startup command. Again, all the necessary file will be created for us. It will be very hard. Now we have to activate our markers application by inserting its name in the list of installed apps in the MyMap setting file. At this point we can proceed to insert in the markers view file a new template view for the page of our map. In the marker templates directory we can now create a template file for our map. For now, we had only usually boilerplate without title, but without a body content. Uh, in the markers URL, uh, we must now add the path of our uh, the view map using its template view. As a last step, we include in turn the URL file of the marker app in that of the project. We just made a first view in Django, 
but it will show only a blank page. So we can move on to something more challenging. Okay, I took this other photo after, after half an hour of walking in the dark. You can see the sunrise in the distance and we are about to start the high altitude path. As for your hike, something will be begin to be seen in our project as well. In fact, we'll add a blank map page using Leaflet library. Leaflet is one of the most used uh, JavaScript library for web maps. It's a free software and it's desktop and mobile friendly. It's very light, it weighs just over 40 kilobytes. It has a very good documentation that you can read directly online. To use Leaflet, we need to link its JavaScript and CSS module in our template. We need, sorry, this, this time. Uh, we need also a div tag with a specific ID. In addition, using the Django static template tag, we'll also link our custom JavaScript CSS file, which we'll now create. We add our CSS file in the static directory and inside it, we add only the basic rule to show, to show a full map, uh, a full screen map. In our JavaScript file, we add the code to view our map. Using the defined variables, we initialize an OpenStreetMap layer. We hook the newly defined layer to our map. And the last statement sets a map view that mostly contain the whole world with the maximum zoom level possible. So we can now start um, the Django project with the run server command and finally visit our map page in the browser. That's it. We just created an empty map with Django and the result is pretty much what you see now. A map without markers showing the whole world. This photo showed a crossroad at the end of the first part of my hike, just before a very challenging uphill stretch. The sun has risen and the landscape is visible around. And likewise, after having visualized our map, we will now start with a, mid, um, a bit more elaborate part, writing more code to create our marker and display them. It's time to get to know and activate GeoDjango, the Django geographic module. Uh, Django added geographic functionality a few years ago in the contrib.gis module with specific fields, database backend, special queries, and also admin integration. Since then, many useful features have been added every year until the latest version. And before activating it, we need to install some requirements. Uh, a mandatory G, uh, GeoDjango requirements is GDEL, I promise. It's an OS Geo library for reading and writing raster and vector geospatial data. I don't know why it's working so bad now. No, it's not simple. Okay, <laughs> um, it's released with a uh, free software license and it's a variety of useful command line for data translation and processing. To easily install GDHIL package on Debian, um, you can use the apt package manager, but for other operating system, you can read specific instruction in the Django documentation. We can now activate GeoDjango by adding the Contrib GIS module to the installed apps and in our project setting. To use GeoDjango, we need to change our database engine and we use one of the compatible database backend. In this case, we have chosen to use Specialite. It's a special extension for SQLite, the Django default database backend. 
It provides uh, vector geodatabase functionality and it's released with uh, free software license. It's a very simple architecture, uh, a complete database uh, in, a, in an ordinary file. As before, on Debian-based system, we can install a specialized package using the apt package manager. So let's add specialized as a database backend, setting the default engine in our project setting. We can now finally define our marker model to store location and a name. Our two fields are both mandatory. The location is a simple point field, and we'll use the name to represent uh, the model. To easily insert new markers in the map, we use the Django admin interface, and we define a marker admin class by inheriting the GIS model admin class, which uses the OpenStreetMap layer in its widget. Now we can generate a new database migration and then apply it to our database. We also create a new super user to access the admin interface and after starting the project locally. We can now start the project as usually with, with run server and we can visit the admin in the browser if it's true. Okay. Here is the page for inserting the markers in our admin. As you can see, we have a text field to enter the name of this bot and a GIS widget that we can use to manually navigate the map and then manually define our point in the space. In this case, it's the, um, the peaks our, I want to reach. So after having created more markers with the admin, we can finally show them in our map. And we can do that by adding the information in our view. Here we are retrieving the, all the markers from the database and converting them to GeoJSON before adding them to the context of our view. In our template, we use the JSON script template tagged to, sorry, It's totally random. No. To, um, uh, sorry. <laughs> In our template, we use geo JSON script template tag to add our marker in our page. The geo JSON script. No. The GeoJSON script template tag will generate a code like this, a JSON, GeoJSON code. So let's edit our JavaScript file and store the GeoJSON in a variable. Starting from this variable, we build a layer for our map and we extract also the name of the single marker for our label. And finally, we add the layer in our map by setting the view to contain all the data. We can now start again our project with the run server command and see again in our browser. So this is the map. and this map, we see few markers I uploaded through the admin. And they are inside the page code, but the loading is still uh, fluid and fast. You can also see the pop-up marker, maybe, uh, of the peak. Um, but if we add a lot of more marker to show, our map loading will, uh, will be much slower and Leaflet will have a harder time rendering it. So we need a better solution. This photo shows a beautiful landscape um, at the end of a challenging climb. The highest peaks begin to be seen all around, but there are still challenging passages before reaching the summit. So we then continue implementing the final version of our map. First, let's start using PostGIS as uh, the new backend engine. 
PostGIS is a, a, a Postgres extension and it's also the best database backend you can use for GeoJungle. It in I tried. <laughs> Sorry for for this. Okay. So it internally integrates special data and has a special data types, indexes and functions. In order to use PostJS as a database backend, we need to install the Postgres, uh, Postgres uh, seal client library. And as before, you can do it with the APT package manager. Now we modify the project database setting, adding the PostJS engine and the connection parameter for our Postgres database, which you can have locally or remotely. So the Python requirements it's a funny presentation today. Well okay. Okay. The Python requirements of our project are increasing and therefore a good practice is to create a requirement file with the package list. We'll use the Python Postgres database adapter, Django REST framework, its geographic add-on, and also Django filter. We install all the Python requirements using the Python package installer module. The package that we use directly in the code of our project are Django REST framework and its geographic add-on which we then insert in the list of the installed apps of our project settings. So let's create a serializer for our marker class. In everything from REST framework JS serializer, we only have to define the optional field to be shown uh, as additional property, the geographic field location, and maybe, and, sorry, and the model marker. So our intention is to expose our markers via our RESTful API, and to do so, we define a read-only view set. We set the location as a field to filter our markers, and then a filter based on bound box. We also return all our marker instances without any limitation or filters. So in the markers application, we define the URL of our new endpoint using the Django REST framework default router to create our path. And finally, we add the definition of the URL of our project. And we had a new path for the API that includes the path specified for our markers app. Sorry. So, after finishing our uh, RESTful API, we move on to update our JavaScript file. As we no longer have uh, the data preloaded in our page, um, we no longer have a way to position the map so that it contains all the markers. So we try to locate the user, in the positive case, if the user authorizes the, the map, we we'll use its location to center the map. In the ne negative case, uh, we locate him in an arbitrary point in the Atlantic Ocean and with a low zoom level, the zero point. So by no longer loading the, mark the markers directly on the page, we therefore ask our endpoint to return only the markers of the specified displayed area, uh, placed as a, bond a bound box string. To build the marker layer, we ask our endpoint for data asynchronously and extract the properties we want to show in the pop-ups. 
We invoke this flow every time the user stops moving on the map. And finally, here is our complete map. In this example, we can see how the markers in a specific, specific map are look. And if it works, I don't know, demo time. So the, lo the loading takes place very fluid, not in the video, <laughs> because the number of call occurs only when the movement of the map stops, and therefore the data traffic is, is reduced to the essential. Uh, and the rendering is carried by leaflet very well, so that's it. Sorry, start again. Okay. Okay, as a, our map project, the hike, no, maybe. As our map project, the hike also, also reached the, its final destination. The view is a bit covered, but we can finally add the new marker to the map with these points. And it, it was one of the longest hikes I ever made, and I hope to be able to do new ones soon and show you if it's work. At the end. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So there are also many other features that we can add in the future in a map. For example, marker customization, pop-ups to show more information, filtering based on relational data, and not only geographic, uh, clustering of the marker both in the front end and back end and also using geocoding services to add marker locations starting from an address, for example, and so on. Before, before saying goodbye, I want to share <coughs> with you some tips uh, based on my experience as a map developer with Django. It's strange. Okay. Well, only two more slides. So the first suggestion is read the documentation in the Django website because it's full information about GeoDjango, but also read the details about how things work uh, in the post-GIS documentation. And read the source code of the board project on GitHub because there is something you can learn only from the source code, unfortunately. And the last one is search for question on Stack Exchange, but try to answer the question and not, not, not read the, the solution because it's a way to improve. Last but not least, you can also study this presentation because it's released with a Creative Commons license. And maybe I can finish. Okay. Okay, in 20 Tab, um, the company I work for, uh, we have developed many maps with Django and you can find out more about open source project and Pythonic work using this context. And last one, to find out more about my personal work with Python and Django, uh, you can use also my context. With this QR code, you can download this presentation uh, on my website, it's already there. And thanks for your patience. <laughs> thanks again for having me and enjoy the next talk in the conference. So if there is some questions, I'm available now and also after the talk. And I don't know if there is some you know, online, no? No online question? No question about the connector? Please. <laughs> uh, thank you for the, uh, for the interesting talk. It's, it's great to see what you can do with, with Django on, on this side of things. I haven't experienced mm -hmm. it before. And uh, I appreciate you soldiering on through the technical difficulties as well. Yes. Um, do you have any recommendations in terms of tile sets, hosting, that sort of thing? Do you recommend that you know you try and serve those files statically with in the static files of Django, or uh, relying on a third-party API service or, or anything like that? Yeah, we uh, use this 
technique to host internally everything for our project. So um, we use only external tiles from Mapbox or the free one from OpenStreetMap. Uh, Open and I think with PostJS, uh, maybe with a managed solution with Postgres, you can solve 90% uh, of the world problem or you can have in a project uh, only if you are very big like a you know, big company you need some more complex solution but for um, maybe 1 million user we use PostgreSQL uh, Postgres no problem so we can, at the point you can you have to start clusterizing or doing something like that but everything you can do directly with Django and Postgres so. Thank you for your question. And I want to thank also the tec technical <laughs> assistance. Me. So if there is no other question, I say goodbye. Thank you.